Hello, hello. Hi. No, no. I haven't seen you since, well since we worked together in Morocco. <laughs> that was the last time we saw each other. It's actually crazy. That was the only time I know <laughs> we saw each other. Apart from, even though we worked for, with each other for a while. It's amazing how friendships form. <laughs> I know. I love it. I love global companies. I've watched you since. Like, I've watched your blog. Well, your vlog to Mozambique. You know, I also enjoy, like, your travel. Um, what is it? It's Love Girl Mag. Your Love Aww, Girl Mag you. vlogs. It's, it's very informative. And it's it's uplifting. That's what I'm looking for. Aww, I love it. I love that you're, you've exposed yourself to that side of my life. Uh, I really enjoy it. So I'm glad you enjoyed it. But hey, I know Nono. Uh, let the listeners learn a little bit more about Nono. Um, my name is Notando, which is um, a Isisulu um, name, which means mother of love. I am from South Africa. I speak Isisulu. I love my country. Uh, I'm a Christian. I enjoy uh, communicating with women, talking about God. I enjoy travel. I enjoy good food, experiences, meeting new people. Um, yeah, that's who I am. I'm married and I don't have ch- children yet. I don't have a dog yet. The first, the first child. <laughs> I have a few plants. <laughs> that I love, but your plant mom. What's the name of your blog? Everything currently at the moment is under Loved Girl Mag and uh, lovegirlmag.com. So that's the official name. Okay, so Loved Girl Mag is about, it's geared towards women and it's geared uh, towards understanding God's love for you as a, using that as a, a tool. To get to know who you are, your purpose, your place, uh, to help you through mental health, to help you through challenges and struggles and how to navigate life. And it's geared towards women between the ages of 13 and 34, mainly because that's who I feel like comfortable to give wisdom and insight to. I don't think I have that many years to speak. Um, yeah, it's about just community and working um this journey of life together with just women, which I love. So that's what it's about in a nutshell. I think that's beautiful. It's, that's an actual beautiful project to take on. So South Africa, how long have you lived? I think I'm more than 25 years, 26 years. What do you love most about your country? Oh my gosh. So, so it has nine provinces and 11 official languages and each province has a main language. So for example, I am currently in Johannesburg and I live in a province called Gauteng. And Gauteng, out of all of them, has all the official languages in this one space, but other provinces have a main language that the entire space um, speaks predominantly. And yeah, it's, it's actually a really exciting, diverse, country you get so many um, experiences there's so many tribes so many ethnicities so many dialects so many foods to enjoy and yeah one of my favorite things about South Africa but I think an area that I love the most and is currently my top favorite is a, a little small town in called Hraskop. Hraskop is an Afrikaans word it's G R A S K O P, Schlaskop. <laughs> Schlaskop. I'm sure if you're a German speaker, you could pronounce it. And it's in the pro- it's, it's in the Bumalanga province, which is three hours away from from Johannesburg. And where, it's where you can find the most beautiful nature in South Africa. You know, it is this beautiful pine trees that go on for days. It's green. It's lush. But beautiful mountains and hills and incredible landscapes. It's actually one of those places that not a lot of South Africans know about or have visited. You have to be someone who is looking 
for that kind of space to find it. Uh, so that's why it's one of my favorite places because it's not as touristy. Uh, it does have some touristy places like the potholes and God's window. And when you get to God's window, you understand why it's called God's window. It does not look like <laughs> a kind of landscape that would belong to anybody. So it's really beautiful. It's typically, if you should go there if you're into nature. So there's this one tourist attraction called the Burke's Lake Potholes. And they're basically these cylindrical formations carved into large rocks. Like these large rocks were carved by the swirling water. And so when you go there uh, and you, it, it looks like a valley, so you look down on it. Such a wonder because there's like these streams of water going through these smooth carved rocks and it goes on for a long time. So it's really beautiful. Uh, there's also the falls called the Berlin Falls. There are also, it's a, it's a beautiful fall there that you could see. And what I mentioned as well, there's God's Window, which is also a hiking trail. Um, and the, the, the prices, the entry prices are really affordable. They are like uh, 30 rand. And one, and one dollar is, is equals to 18.69 at this point. One US? So the second rand. Yeah, one US dollar. So, and it's around 30 rand. So I'm not sure how much that is in dollars, but it's quite cheap. It's very affordable. You don't really pay like a like an entrance fee. Um, and you can hike there. You can go there. Are three levels where you can see the window, the God's window. The first level, you can see a little bit of the landscape, and as you uh, mount up, then you can see the full the fullness of it in its glory. And it's really, really breathtaking. So beautiful. But the pace there in Bumalang and Khaskop is quite slow because it's, it's a small town. Uh, it's full of nature, so it's quite refreshing to be there. If you are trying to escape the hustle and bustle of Johannesburg and you're just tired of you know work and everything, um, it's a very great space to get refreshed. And uh, the pace is quite slow and the towns are quite small and it's, yeah it's really it's really nice place and it's not too far from other really great uh, tourist attractions as well i think there's a forest nearby in sabi and it's just nice it's closest to johannesburg in terms of like a main city yes it's closest to it's close to pretoria and johannesburg and pretoria is a capital city of south africa so but most people fly into johannesburg because it's a cosmopolitan city um, and so it's three hours away. So if you fly into South Africa at, uh, at Or Tambo International Airport, then you're about three to three and a half hours away from the um, three and a half hour drive away from Kraskop and Bumalanga. Right. And I, I don't think many people may take note of that. Like, I think there are so many countries around the world where people think the most popular place that you fly into is the capital. The city is actually a completely different city. So true. I was actually even thinking about New York. I'm like, is it even the capital? I don't think so. It's um, DC. Washington, DC. I'm not embarrassed myself. Like, <laughs> no, I'm embarrassed too. No, you're right. We're in DC, but a lot of people fly into New York. And... and it's actually where you get sometimes most of, you get some of the cheapest flights internationally from New York as well. That's why I. I think a lot of people fly into New York. As well, and that you mentioned grass, it's just now grass cup. Yeah, you can call it grass cup. It does look like grass. Somebody is coming to like Africa for the first time. How long would you say like they should plan their trip for? Of course, it's coming to South Africa for the first time. Going to grass cup or wanting to just one experience across South Africa. I know South Africa is definitely one of those countries you have to come back to. They come, they fly into Johannesburg. You know, they may want to go to Cape Town and then check out the suggestion grass cup. Okay, so I would say you should visit South Africa for at least three weeks. And South Africa is one of those places where it's actually quite affordable, especially if you're flying internationally. So being here for three weeks actually would cost you um, maybe less than a three-day stay in somewhere like London or something. So the three weeks, if you have the time, is worth it. Um, but how I would miss it out for you is that you should fly into, into Johannesburg 
and you should spend two days and get to know the cosmopolitan city and get to know the history. Here is where you will meet a lot of people from different parts of uh, the world or Africa. It's actually kind of like a New York type city. It's very diverse. People come here particularly for work, uh, to make money, and uh, but they are very like diverse and friendly and just uh, an amazing bunch. And so you should stay here for like two days and just get to know the space. Um, and then if you are into nature, you should go to the Kruger National Park and you should stay there for two nights. I wouldn't recommend staying in the common hotels because they are very expensive. Like I have never been to the Kruger National Park because that's how expensive it is. Like it could it could cost you thirty four thousand rands a night. Oh wow. I don't even know how much that is in a in dollars, but I would not recommend you staying there. But you can stay at nearby Airbnb and um, it'll be very affordable and you can get the same experience and then you can go into the park for like the safari drives and you know get a feel of that um if anywhere in south africa you can if you don't even need to go to kruger national park for the safari drive anywhere in south africa you can enjoy a really good safari drive so if you don't want to go to the kruger national park you don't have to a lot of tourists like to so i would recommend staying at an airbnb or even like a boutique guest house or uh, a boutique hotel uh, nearby would be far more affordable than the National Park, like staying in those designated hotels. Um, but I was also saying anywhere in South Africa, if you want to do a safari drive, you can do it anywhere in South Africa, uh, depending on what you're into. So if you are into like lion and rhino, I would say do it while you are here in South Africa, in, in Johannesburg. So does South Africa have the big five? Yes. I heard the thunder. <laughs> I wasn't here the rain, but I definitely heard the thunder. So Johannesburg just thunders a lot. I mean, if you like thunder and sleeping to people, rain. I'm right now in South Africa, right? Yeah. It rains from spring, summer, not all the time. But we get a, a fair amount of rain. It's not the type of rain that it's not the type of rain that you know you could like indoors for days. No, it'll just rain for like an hour or two. But it's mostly sunny. Um, but yeah, so we have the big five, and um, you can pretty much see the big five pretty much anywhere in South Africa. But I think the Kruger has is known for having extensive. Um, extensive like safari drive and because it's a bigger uh, national park and but you can pretty much see them in in other places as well we have the lion and safari park which is about an hour away from johannesburg and pretty much every province has one where you could do a really nice safari drive so i wouldn't recommend that you go to kruger unless you really want to go like are the safaris as expensive but like, because I know like a lot of people go to Tanzania and on the East Coast to do sometimes these safaris and they say how expensive it could run you. They tend to be cheaper in South Africa. I think they're fairly cheap as far as I'm concerned because there's so many. We have so many to choose from. And I think because of that, they are... And you can you can decide what, what animal you want to see. Like you can go to the monkey sanctuary, the elephant sanctuary, the lion and the rhino park. And so it just depends on what you want to see. But also within those parks, there are also packages. So if you want to have like a extensive feed the lion, feed a giraffe, like there's at the lion and safari park, which is my favorite. Um, there's a package which is around 800 grand. And you can you can do the normal safari, see the lion, see the buffalo, see everything. And then after that, when you have your lunch, by there's some uh, dam where you can have your lunch. And you can feed the, then they bring you lunch and you can feed the giraffes. And then you can feed them the snacks that you have and they can just walk around you. So it's actually a really nice experience. You can also even just go to... Um, a place in Johannesburg called Cradle Moon. It's like a resort, and you, there are many activities there. But you, the animals are going to be walking around you. It's a, it's a, 
it's a play on the stereotype. <laughs> You said it would be like eight hundred thousand grand. No, eight hundred grand. Oh, so wait, this is like a one day, a one entry. Yeah. This okay. Is, <laughs> for that experience, it's eight hundred grand. So typically, it's like five hundred, but you get charged to compete if you're South African or if you are international. But the difference is like fifty grand or hundred grand. It's not that significant. Okay, so all. that's like twenty six US. 25 years yeah, it's not, there. It's yeah. not that bad, I think. And you can have that giraffe experience for just 800 grand. And, or you can even go to like a place called like Cradle Moon, which is in Johannesburg. And it has like, it has the um, Springbok, which is the South African national um, animal. Right. And they have zebras, zebras, zebras. And they have. Uh, and they just walk around the place and yeah it's basically a play on the stereotypes that most people from the west think that animals live around them. listen don't worry about the thunder like we are getting the south african summer experience it's afternoon time so you can go to different places they can pay 800 rand or you can pay 30 rand and you can still kind of get somewhat of a stuff somewhat of an experience Experience. And I think even they have Cradle Moon. They you can lodge where you can stay, but also at the same time you can do like a, a drive, like a mini safari drive. There's also a river. You can swim. You could hike. So you can pretty much have a safari experience quite affordably. You know what I was thinking when I said the eight hundred thousand rand? Um, they have those. Uh, um, multiple day safaris, like you stay on a camp each day. You go out on a drive sleeping around the animals experience well not around the animals but they're not too far once that kind of experience you can get it there as well you know what i always people talk about in south africa is style and i do remember i do remember meeting you in person and you are one of the most stylish people i've ever met in my life like and it just comes so naturally thank you what what do people say about style? I, I don't think I've ever heard that. No, like, uh, most people that I know that have gone to South Africa always speak about, like, just the style. Like, it's just... Clothing style. To describe it. Like, yeah, like, it's not, like, eclectic or anything. They just say, like, South Africans are very well-dressed. Like, especially, like, in Johannes. They find that the people are beautiful and they're just like, they're just very well dressed. Like, it's a kind oh. of, like, if I think about your style, it's just like, it's just very well put together. Like, and it just, it just looks good. Thank you. Like, <laughs> so, so now that you're reacting this way, I realize like it, it really does just come naturally to you. Like, y'all don't actually think South Africans are stylish people. Like, <laughs> South Africans are very social beings. So I guess that also comes with, especially in Johannesburg, it's very social, very warm, very friendly. You can go up to anyone and speak to them. But I guess, honestly, South Africa, Johannesburg in particular is like a mini New York in that people just come to work and live this cosmopolitan life. And I guess fashion comes with that. And so, yeah, that's what it's like. But I, yeah, I've never heard of that before, though. As an African who have the same similar standard of beauty, would say, oh, so Africans are beautiful. So, yeah, that's what I've heard. But thank you, that's a compliment. You said that Johannesburg is, like, cosmopolitan. Um, you told me about Grass Cup, which is, like, more, you know, native and whatnot. Is there anywhere else in South Africa, like, you would say somebody should visit except Cape Town, like I mean, like I feel like everybody knows about Cape Town. <laughs> so, um, so I would say if if you're here for three weeks, then you should be here for two days. Maybe go to Haskop or the National Kruger National Park. Then you should come back to Johannesburg, and then you should go to my favorite coastal city in South Africa called Port Elizabeth. Port Elizabeth is now known as Gabeja, but it's formerly known as Port Elizabeth. No one would be confused if you said Port Elizabeth. And it has a beautiful harbor where you can get really good fish. Oh my gosh, so good. 